now you want to entice me by saying, mm. hey, give us some organs, you might can get home early. But what if I get home early and now my health is a concern? What if I get home early and something happens to me now? What if I go on that, that, the operating table and don't come off? Because see, I'm only an inmate. And I signed a contract to say I would donate organs. Mm. And see, that's dehumanizing. Now inmates are just inmates, they're not human beings no more. I mean, you work for free, you don't, you know, you, 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 you get all this time, it's mass incarceration, and now we want your body parts. That's a clip from a recent KRIV interview regarding a proposed bill in Massachusetts that would reduce inmates' prison sentences if they become an organ donor. But we're talking about the kinds of organs that you can donate while still living, things such as skin, liver, a kidney, and your bone marrow. Now, critics say that the bill is basically organ harvesting and unethical, but those that are in favor say that it could help people who are waiting on transplant lists. Now, we have reached out to the bill's sponsors, but they have not so far replied to our invitation to be on the show. I do want to bring back in Elizabeth Mathos. She is uh, weighing in on this topic. It's quite complicated. Elizabeth is the executive director of Prisoners Legal Services of Massachusetts. That org fights to protect inmates' civil rights. Elizabeth, thank you for staying with us. Now, obviously giving up any organ is not anything to be taken lightly. The health complications are, are plentiful. Is this dehumanizing, though, to even ask uh, this kind of voluntary, so-called voluntary opportunity from someone who is in such dire straits as imprisoned? I don't think so. I mean, you brought up a great point um, just a few minutes ago that proponents of the legislation also bring up, which is that um, people often want to donate their or not often, but there are cases where prisoners want to donate their organs to their own family members and loved ones. and hmm. um, there should be a path for doing so that is healthy and safe. And I think the problem that you just alluded to is that these are spaces fraught with uh, many problems in the healthcare setting in particular uh, that are need to be rectified before something like this can really be scaled up. Of course, if someone wants to donate an organ to their um, you know, dying or ailing uh, mother or father or loved one while they're incarcerated, they should have the option of doing that. But again, that mm -hmm. has to still be fully consensual, fully informed, and they need to be able to do that in a safe way. I have had clients who needed transplants, and despite mm -hmm. the family member on the outside being the healthcare proxy and wanting to, to donate their organ to their incarcerated loved one, that process was not facilitated. And so there are um, major issues with how that can be done. We've also had clients who have needed transplants or needed surgeries, even less than a transplant, uh, uh, any kind of invasive right. surgery, but they did not receive that surgery because they were told that the post-operative care was too complicated while being incarcerated. And so we have wow. to take those things under consideration when we're looking at the health consequences of organ donation. Yeah, and you bring up post-op care, which you cannot have this conversation and not look at the logistical point there. Taxpayers are obviously footing the health care bills of all prisoners. Uh, do you think prisons are equipped to offer adequate post-care uh, around something like an organ donation, from what you've seen? No, not right now, absolutely mm -hmm. not. I mean, that would need to happen outside of the prison setting. In our opinion, it's really, you know, even for, for clients and prisoners who have had uh, major surgeries, oftentimes there are issues with wound care, just basic wound care and wounds right. getting infected because there isn't um, adequate wound care happening. And that's not just in Massachusetts. This is, you know, happens in facilities all across the country. So it's an, a systemic mm -hmm. issue and it's really endemic to how prison health care happens in these spaces. It's, you know, subcontracted out like many other states. It's a flat rate contract. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so that leads to a lot of problems. Yeah. Now, again, this isn't even the first time uh, we've seen this in our nation. South Carolina proposed a very similar bill back in 2007, ultimately scrapped the idea after being called out for, obviously, many of the problems you talked about, Elizabeth. Instead, though, the state created a voluntary organ donation program that did not offer a sentence reduction. Is that something you see as more ethical? Is that something you'd prefer Massachusetts to consider? 
I have to say we're not opposed to sentence reductions for this population. And I think one issue that, that really highlights is that if uh, we are willing to give sentence reductions for good deeds like donating an organ, then from a public safety perspective, if those people are fit to be released, then they should be released. They shouldn't have to give up an organ in order to do that, right? Mm. So that's that's one perspective that I think we really have to think about. And then the other is um, it, it doesn't resolve the problem of the, the potential major health impacts of donating right. organs from, the, from carceral spaces. I will say, as a criminal defense lawyer uh, in my past life, you could always, this could also be a, like a discretionary issue with a prosecutor or a judge, right? Like you don't necessarily have to have this legis this comprehensive kind of compelling legislation to create an opportunity for sentence re re uh, reduction rather around those types of good deeds. Just wanted to put that out there as well. Elizabeth Matos, thank you so much. We appreciate your insight. Now up next, did the feds try to use an informant to infiltrate Black Lives Matter? A new podcast claims that it has the receipts. We're gonna break it all down after the break.